Firestorm Festival to get a few words with the band Dust Coda. Hi guys, great to meet you. Hey mate. Hello, hey man, how you doing? How did the band come about? Uh, John was in an old project that was just really soft, limp and lame. Um, and he needed musical rescue. <laughs> And I'm basically this real and bad a I'm this I'm this and a singing teacher. And I'm like singing teacher. this badass macho rock and roll musician. <laughs> who like pulled him pulled him from this like really limp, lame musical journey. So he's going down. He's like, don't do that, it'll be really lame, come with me, we're gonna be badass. And then the band started. Yeah. And he started paying me to basically be his friend as well. So it was this weird thing like I was getting singing lessons from a guy who can't sing, and he was getting like friend lessons from a guy, so it was really kind of fun. It was awesome. It was great. The music came out great. Yeah. yeah. You received plenty of airplay on Planet Rock Radio and support from Wyatt Wendell's. How has this been instrumental in your success? It was a really good start for us, you know. Um, when Wyatt first played a song of ours called Weakness, um, we'd, never, we'd never been associated with Planet Rock before, and it was around a similar time, not, not, long, before, not long after that, we got to play Rockstock, um, and it was actually, it, it pushed us forward a lot. It was a really good thing, because, you know, getting yourself on the new rock show was a great thing for us, and it opened so many doors, and, you know, we've obviously been working on Planet Rock for ever since, so, yeah, it was, it was very instrumental. Have you ever met Wyatt? Yeah, yeah. But, um, I mean, we're on the same scene. So you see him at things like this, or at all the Planet Rock events. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. a few times. I spoke to him uh, at the Smith and Cotson show. He came to one. Le he came to Leeds. That's right, he came to Leeds, one the Brunella Social Club, I think it is. We had a bit of a chat to him there. You have received several, uh, you received several awards. Which are you most proud of? Um, What's your favourite uh, The famous superhero bass players awards. Fucking legend. Mine's um, actually the How to Be a Good Friend award because he's still paying me to be his buddy and I've got the award for that. I'm so proud of that. I've got a porn star award for the most. Um, how do I go with this? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. It was been a long drive it's today. It's so hot. Oh, and it's That's really so fucking hot. hot. So, no, no um, sleep. Um, awards, we got no, the first Rocks Awards for Planet Rock was a real in surprise because we weren't signed yet. Um, you know, we were, we were establishing the name and then we got we got nominated for two awards, like Best Album or Best British Act. Wow! Yeah, cool. I get, you know, I get to like mega names like Maiden and, and all these people. So that was really cool, really cool. And that was like 2017 or something. What are your influences? Influences? Spice Girls, Backstreet Boys, um, no, I'm in mean, all seriousness, um, me personally, uh, everything from the Stones to Audio Slave to the Eagles to Ryan Adams to the War on Drugs to Michael Kiwanu Kiwanuka, um, yeah, that's, that's kind of, like, just everything that's classic and brilliant about guitar music is pretty much what I've been like. I'm a 90s kid, I don't know, that says a lot. Pretty much all the good stuff from the 90s is, is my influence. John's ex-girlfriend. <laughs> inspires me every day. Offensive! She's Ooh. fucking beautiful. I love that woman. <laughs> she inspires everyone. Oh. Goddess. <laughs> I want to say you all. <laughs> Was it difficult to get the record deal with Earache Records? Piece of fucking piss. John's got his fingers <laughs> with his mouth. <laughs> <laughs> oh. and, uh, once you're in that spell, <laughs> it's hard to say that. <laughs> um, <laughs> what, what are we fucking ten? Oh, I'm feeling yeah. hysterical today. It's the heat and no sleep. Um, so it was actually, it was just kind of, kind of something that just came about. And I don't usually use this word, but I will organically. They, you know, we did a show, they put on some acts for like a showcase and, and a band pulled out and we happened to just get asked to fill in and they saw the show and we got chatting. It was actually kind of like the Scooby-Doo ending from Wayne's World. You know, we got, we, we played a gig, the labour was there, I was at the bar having a chat and, you know, chatting up some girl or something and then the label guys came up and started talking and they said, what are you up to? And we said, well, you know, we're playing rock and roll, we've got a record and they said, can we hear it? And I said, sure. And then we chatted and they heard it and then we just started working together. 
we're, st we're st still together. So in, in, in an age where all you hear is like, oh, the music industry is what it used to be, and all this stuff, it was a very classic thing. It was classic. You know, they it saw cool. us live, they really liked it. We yeah. got chatting within about under a month we were signed. Yeah. But it was really cool in the, that sense. It was a cool experience. Yeah. You know, and, and, and it's been cool so far. Yeah. I mean, they're. Tier 8 Records, man, they've been around, what, 30 years? Their yeah, team's amazing. It's like, yeah. fucking, you know, DP's a dude. Yeah. He cares and about the music, the rest of the you game. know, which is really important, especially today, you know, because some people don't. Yeah, very true. <coughs> and they own labels. Do you enjoy being on tour? <laughs> no, um... <laughs> I... <laughs> when Tony starts laughing like Beavis from Beavis and Butthead, that's when I know we're on a roll. No, I, I enjoy it because I, I know things get into a rhythm. And what I mean by that is like there's a certain kind of timing to things. Like I know usually like 1 p.m. every day I hear a and that's the sound of Tony cracking a beer. If that happens, then I know we're on track and the world is in a good place. So, yeah, there's rhythms to touring. It can be tiring sometimes and, you know, but it's fucking great man you get to travel around and make rock and roll and it's an adventure cool every time it's different you know yeah. you never know what you're going to end up with you know covered up in mud or the next day you might have a beautiful day like this you know just hanging around and enjoying the sunshine yeah exactly what's next for Dust Uh we are making album number three this year so we finished recording it um, and we're about to start the mixing process so exciting times get that finished by the end of the year and then next year we'll bring out a new album and tour it and play it for all these wonderful people so exciting times ahead uh, that's the end of the interview thank you for your time thank you Thanks very much, very much buddy. see you later people you. oh shit I forgot to press record no, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs>